Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Today we are covering a very unique and interesting topic, I think, um, because I'm going to be talking about the menstrual cycle and what is a cycle, what is a period and all this kind of questions and what happens when there's a fertilization, what happens when there's no fertilization and much, much more. So keep on watching because it might be interesting. Um, the first thing that I did is I've taken a paper that kind of explains everything that happens um, in terms of hormones inside our ovaries and inside the uterus. So it's a quite complete guide. The first thing I did is I've divided our cycle into two periods with this tiny line here. The first part is the uh, follicular phase, which goes from day one to day 14, so 14 days. And then the luteal phase is our second part, and it goes from day 14 to day 28. Also, bear in mind that the last day of one cycle is also the first day of another cycle, because the first day of a cycle is the first day of your period, okay? So first day of your period is also the first day of the next cycle. Okay, so what happens in the first part of the period, so the follicular phase is that the interior pituitary gland starts producing the FSH and LH hormones, which in the first part of the cycle are, have quite low concentration in the blood. They're not highly concentrated, um, but they're important because especially the FSH induces egg growth and maturation. And that is ex extremely important because what we need to get to is ovulation. So the low con concentrations of FSH are still good enough to make an, an egg develop. And what also starts producing is low levels of estrogen. Uh, we also have progesterone in this phase, but the concentration in the blood, the quantities produced are really, really minimal. They're almost none. It's almost non-existent. So we're not gonna take progesterone into consideration here, but only FSH and LH and estrogen. So what happens basically is FSH is produced, it induces egg maturation, okay, which lasts approximately 14 days, but it may last a lot longer or a little less as well. And then again, the follicle produces estrogen, which really starts growing. The amounts of estrogen produced start increasing dramatically from day 10 to day 14, when the follicle is big enough to start producing a lot of it. Then estrogen reaches a certain peak, and it's this peak of estrogen that induces the higher peak in the LH hormone, which... Um, makes ovulation happen, basically. So once again, FSH makes um, the follicle mature. The follicle increases the levels of estrogen, estrogen peaks, and then right after that, there's a peak in the LH hormone, which induces ovulation. Now, what does estrogen do apart from making the LH, I'm sorry, the LH peak happen? So estrogen is the main responsible hormone for uh, uterine lining growth. So what this does, it, it makes the endometrium grow. And so the endometrium grows in the first part of the cycle. Obviously, you have to wait uh, until the uterine lining is gone after your period, but then as soon as it, it's gone, as soon as it's uh, back to uh, the lowest amount, it immediately starts growing again. So it's a very quick process. You know, one cycle ends and the other one begins. It's extremely fast. So 
estrogen levels just increase and this makes the uterine lining to grow until it gets to the ovulation period more or less. So what happens after ovulation? As you can tell, there's a, a giant drop both in LH and FSH hormones. We're not going to cover that. It's not the most important thing. The most important thing is that what is left in the ovary once the follicle explodes is kind of a, it's like a sac with what remains of it, which is called corpus luteum. And the corpus luteum produces progesterone. So as you can see in the first part of the cycle, when we didn't have a corpus luteum yet, um, there was basically no progesterone production at all, almost none. But in the second phase where the corpus luteum is formed, finally, we actually get a very huge amount of progesterone production. And progesterone, unlike estrogen, doesn't make the uterine lining grow, but it makes it stay as it is. It basically tells the uterine lining or the endometrium to stay as it is. Don't grow, uh, stay where you are because ovulation has occurred, so maybe conception has occurred, and you have to be prepared to stay there because implantation may occur in a few days. So this is what uh, progesterone is basically telling uh, to the endometrium. And one important thing to remember is that, um, so progesterone doesn't really make it grow, but another thing that progesterone does it is um, it makes the endometrium uh, grow in terms of blood vessels. So what this phase is really about is about an enrichment of blood vessels uh, for uh, the uterine lining also because implantation is about to occur. So what happens in the first phase is a growth, and in the second phase, let's say kind of a development in the blood vessel presence that we have inside the uterine lining. Um, this is really important. What makes your period happen? So if there's no conception, um, the corpus luteum will live uh, for roughly 14 days. And then after 14 days, it, it'll start to degenerate. It will degenerate, actually it will degenerate even before. Uh, but uh, after 14 days, it will basically stop producing progesterone. The corpus luteum will not be able to produce progesterone anymore. And what is going to happen is that there's gonna be a huge drop in the progesterone levels. And that is not, that is basically going to make your uh, endometrium break down because there's no progesterone to keep it as it is, to keep it intact. And so it's just going to shed. Um, so basically, um, what is important to keep the endometrium as it is, is the corpus luteum and its production of the progesterone. What happens if a fertilization occurs? So you should know that um, an ovum can be fertilized for maximum 24 hours after ovulation. So um, 28 hours to get fertilized and then it takes roughly six days to go from the fallopian tubes into the uterus and start implantation. So we're going basically from day 14 to day 18 to 20 roughly right we're here when implantation starts and it usually lasts for approximately six days and um six days so we're gonna get to basically let's say 22 24 25 days something around that and once implantation has happened even before it finishes happening from the moment that it starts to happen, um, the embryo starts producing um, what is called, actually, 
beta, ACE, C, G, which are beta uh, human chorionic gonadotropins, which basically tell the corpus luteum to keep produ producing progesterone. So this thing is produced by the embryo once it starts implanting, okay? And that allows the corpus luteum to grow and develop into a different form of corpus luteum, which is called corpus luteum gravidatis, which is basically the corpus luteum that a pregnant woman has. And the, the production of this hormone, it's a form of hormone, uh, from the embryo, which makes the corpus luteum grow and develop into this other form of corpus luteum. It's not just about development, it's about growth. It's a really huge growth. A corpus luteum gravidatis is as big as half an ovary. So we're going from a small corpus luteum, which is, I would say, almost as small as a follicle, to being as big as an ovary. So we're talking about really, really huge. Um, and, but this is because, obviously, during pregnancy, the uterine lining can't, broke, can't break. So the corpus luteum need, needs to keep producing progesterone. And a lot of it, because the uterine lining needs to stay as it is. So this is what happens. What if the corpus luteum degenerates for some reason? Um, or it doesn't turn into the corpus luteum gravidatis? Well, in that case, we have an early on miscarriage. I think that's pretty obvious, because the corpus luteum degenerates, or it doesn't produce enough progesterone, and the uterine lining breaks. So although there might be an implantation happening, it breaks down, and that is an early on miscarriage. Um, the corpus luteum gravidatis lasts for about, um, I think, around 12 weeks. So we're talking about around four months, okay? Because after four months, the production of progesterone is um, taken up by the placenta. So the corpus luteum degenerates. Okay, this form of the corpus luteum can degenerate after four months because the placenta start, starts producing progesterone. And the placenta is really big. It's not as small as a corpus luteum, which is still the remaining of a group of cells. So it's a small thing, although it's as big as half an ovary sometimes. It's still a small thing. It's not as big as a placenta. And because it lasts four months, this is the reason why the first 12 weeks of a pregnancy are so delicate. And because a lot of people don't want to say they're pregnant because you can have a miscarriage easily. One of the reasons is this, that this small cell has to take up this incredible journey and start producing the progesterone for four months. So it cannot degenerate after 14 days. It has to keep growing and producing progesterone for a long time. So the small thing has to take up such a huge and fundamental job. <laughs> and this is why, you know, the first 12 weeks are so uh, delicate and um, anything can happen, really. Okay. Um, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Um, if you were interested in it, if you liked it, if it helped, although it wasn't exactly medical perfect, <laughs> I might not have used the right terms, it might not have been the exact thing, but I really try to keep it simple, I really try to keep it essential, and if you liked it, just give it a thumbs up. If you would like me to do more videos of the sort in the future, which I will be doing, uh, just leave a comment down below and I'll get back to you. And in the next videos, I will probably be talking about how to track your period, um, how to track irregular periods, because that's a bit tricky. Uh, I'm going to be talking about PCOs and what happens and what are the hormonal levels of PCOs and what that is about. I'm going to be showing you some pictures, it's going to be interesting, and 
that's all I guess. Um, if you want me to talk about other gynecological issues, just leave a comment down below. Um, and thank you so much for watching guys. Bye!